Welcome to this episode. All right, on our way to get our donuts. Of coffee and donuts. When we're again able to meet in person at our parishes, I look forward to the opportunity to join in these gatherings after our masses. All right, honey, what kind of donut do you want? Pizza. Until then, be assured of my prayers for all of you and your families, and thank you for all that you do to sustain the faith in our communities and in your homes. God bless all of you. Welcome back to Coffee and Donuts. Today's episode is all about our Archbishop, Cardinal Sean O'Malley. You know what I've always wondered about Cardinal Sean? What? How does he take his coffee? A little cream, a little sugar, does he take it black, does he have coffee regular, a little milk? How but Mike, it? Mike, what if he doesn't drink coffee? Well, that's... <laughs> I mean, we that's don't know. That's preposterous. Well... I mean, he could not, you know, he's a Franciscan. They take their vow of poverty pretty seriously. It's kind of a luxury, you know what I'm yeah. saying? I don't know. But he's a capuchin. Cappuccinos are named for capuchins. Are you serious? Absolutely. Huh. I never knew that. Wait, why? The color of the drink uh-huh. is so similar to the color of the capuchin robe. That is a fun little trivia fact. Free of charge. You're welcome. Okay. So he's got to have, I think he would have coffee. If anything, I could see him not having donuts. No, I mean, everybody loves a good donut. He must eat donuts. I mean, yeah, but as you said, he is a Franciscan and donuts, you know, kind of luxurious. I mean, I mean, unless it was a plain donut. I guess plain donuts are, you know, well, plain, so. Okay, I, okay, fine. You know what? There's only one way to settle this. Cardinal Sean, if you're watching this, can you please tell us how you take your coffee and if you like donuts, and if so, what kind of donut? Inquiring minds want to know, our viewers, and I mean, frankly, I think we're very interested as well, Amelia. Oh, yeah. Know, so. Anyways, the whole reason we brought up Cardinal Sean in the first place is because this episode is all about him. And where he's been in the Archdiocese. Kind of like Carmen San Diego. Yeah, kind of like Carmen San Diego. I, uh, I rewrote the lyrics to the Carmen Sandiego theme song just for this episode. You ready for it? No, I don't think so. Where in the world is... Wait, what happened? Oh, I'm guessing the FCC pulled the plug on your little rendition of Carmen Sandiego. You know, copyright issues and all. All right. Well, okay. I guess that might be for the best, to be honest with you. Yeah. So where in the world is Cardinal Sean? Virtually everywhere. See what I did there? Virtually everywhere. Oh, that's the kind of joke I would make. We've been spending too much virtual time together. Let's move on. Back in August, Cardinal Sean went to the mother house of the Daughters of St. Paul in Jamaica Plain to celebrate the perpetual profession of Sister Christina Galema. In his remarks, he noted what a rare and special occasion it was to be at the profession of a religious woman. Every year there are priestly ordinations, but professions of women religious are few and far between. What a gift Sister Christina's witness is. On the other side of Jamaica Pond, at the Poor Clares Monastery, Cardinal Sean celebrated his 50th anniversary of his ordination. Originally, he intended to travel back to Cleveland to celebrate with the Poor Clares there, much like he did for his 25th anniversary. But like all of us, the Cardinal has had to make adjustments because of the pandemic. The sisters invited him for refreshments after Mass. Mm, mm. Are you drinking coffee? Well, that answers one question. Hey, can you see what he puts in it? Uh, sadly not. We'll have to wait to see if he calls in. To top off the summer. And to continue with the Jamaica Plain theme. The Cardinal celebrated Labor Day with the Capuchins over a small cookout. To fast forward to October, His Eminence spoke at St. John's Seminary's celebration of lay formation. Allow me to welcome you the 20th anniversary celebration of the Archdiocese of Boston's graduate degree programs at St. John's Seminary, 
for the formation of laity and religious. Under the direction of Father Stephen Salox, Dr. Aldona Lingertat, and a highly credentialed faculty, we are blessed to offer both Masters of Arts in Ministry and Masters of the Theological Study programs, greatly enhancing the quality of lay leadership in our parishes, agencies, and central ministries. As we protect the public health by maintaining social distancing, it's a blessing to have access to this means of coming together to mark this milestone for lay formation. In these times, we need to embrace the truth that families, friends, and colleagues that pray together and share their experiences of faith are strengthened in their personal lives and in the call to discipleship. In addition to this evening's gathering, there will be three more virtual events in the coming months, focusing on devotion to our Blessed Mother and the Rosary, providing the opportunity to strengthen our connections. Pope Francis has noted that in this year, marked by the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic, we are like the disciples on the Sea of Galilee, caught off guard by an unexpected turbulent storm. We have realized that we are on the same boat, all of us fragile and at times disoriented, but called to row together, each of us in need of comforting the other. Together we will see our way through the turbulence to the calm and the assurance that Jesus brings us. Through the intercession of his Blessed Mother, who we turn to in a special way during October, the month of the Holy Rosary, may we continue our work to build up the church in the world today. Thank you for all that you do to respond to the call to service and be assured of my continued prayers. And others all around the diocese are celebrating the month of the Rosary too. Every October around the feast of um, the apparition of Our Lady uh, at Fatima to come together and to pray for the United States of America. Have you heard the story of Our Lady of Aparecida? Can't say that I have. Three fishermen in Brazil were out fishing one day and they weren't catching anything. Sounds a lot like the apostles. But they cast their nets again and felt something catch. When they pulled up their nets, it wasn't a fish, but rather a headless statue of the Virgin Mary. Oh. They cast their nets again, and this time they pulled up the head of the statue. After that, they had a very successful day of fishing. Huh. The reeling in of this statue transformed the devotion of the people in the area. And to this day, Our Lady of Aparecida remains the patroness of Brazil. Well, that's awesome, Mike, but uh, how does it connect to our diocese? Well, a whole group of Brazilian youth went to Our Lady of Fatima Shrine in Holliston to celebrate. I've lost track. Where do we leave off with the Cardinal? He was in Brighton. Well, technically he was at the cathedral, but he was at an event virtually in Brighton. So we've only reported on the Cardinal moving around Boston. That's really not as exciting as Carmen San Diego. 
You're right. Let's trek up a bit north then. Cardinal Sean made his way to St. Teresa's Parish in North Reading to celebrate a mass to mark the parish's 75th anniversary. Following the Mass, in honor of the year of the Eucharist, the Cardinal led a Eucharistic procession. To go kind of west, his evidence celebrated an outdoor Mass at Our Lady Comforter of the Afflicted in Waltham. Our Ladies has been celebrating Mass outdoors since Masses were able to resume, taking advantage of their large parking lot and grounds. The Cardinal was excited to spend time with so many parishioners. You know, I'm kind of surprised there isn't a story about the Cardinal blessing animals we can cut to. And that's a good point, him being Franciscan and all. But for all of you out there who can't pass the Feast of St. Francis without thinking about cute animals. Here are some images of the parishes where the blessing of the animals did happen. You know, the only time I bless animals is right before I eat them. Well, that concludes our trip following the Cardinal around the diocese. If you want to know more of his travels, check out his blog, cardinalshawnsblog.org. And if you want to hear more feel-good stories, keep tuning into Coffee and Donuts. I'm Mike. And I'm Amelia. Until next time. God bless. Uh, Amelia? What, yeah? What, what are you doing? Well, I, I wanted to explore, like Carmen San Diego. Good idea. <laughs> <laughs>